hey Molly, can you really make a whole video on Jurassic Park's 30th anniversary? You bet Jurassic can. Jurassic can. Jurassic can. Yes. Welcome, men fam, to Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Did you know that today, the day this video premieres, it's the 30th anniversary of the smash success Jurassic Park. That's right, on June 11th, 1993, Jurassic Park hit theaters and the world was introduced to Dr. Alan Grant, Dr. Ian Malcolm, Dr. Ellie Sadler, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and so much more. So today, I'm at Universal Orlando to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park. We're gonna check out the all new, amazingly themed tribute store, share some hidden details and Easter eggs, or should I say raptor eggs, am I right? <laughs> Try some exclusive new special treats and Universal is even hooking us up with a private tour of a Jurassic space on property that I've never been to and I'm so excited to check out. I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited. It's gonna be Dino Might. First stop on our Jurassic adventure today, the brand new 30th anniversary tribute store. So Universal does these tribute stores. They do different ones quarterly. They're one of my favorite things Universal does because these are over the top, incredibly detailed stores that are worth walking through even if you don't want to buy anything. But I assure you, I'm going to want to buy something in here. During the Halloween season, they'll do an HHN theme store. They do a Christmas theme store. And this summer, obviously, they're doing Jurassic Park because it's the 30th anniversary. If you weren't aware, Universal is the studio that did Jurassic Park. So they've got lots of real props and behind the scenes and Easter eggs. Enough talking. Let's get in there. All right. Uh, the pre-production office is August 1991. Here we go. Whoa. T-Rex head. My pop culture nerd, movie making nerd self is geeking out right now with all these different models and blueprints. So this is supposed to be what the offices looked like around Universal 1991 before the movie came out in 1993. But a fun Jurassic Park fact is they actually started working on Jurassic Park even earlier than that. Universal knew Michael Crichton was an incredible author and he's doing this brand new dinosaur book. So they're like, we don't even need to read it. Here's $1.5 million to give us the rights. And they actually ended up paying Michael an additional $500,000 to come consult on the movie. But isn't that crazy to be offered $1.5 million before your book even comes out? Like Universal's just like, yeah, we'll do it. We'll take it, give it to us. There was actually a bidding war over it. So many people wanted it and Universal won. Oh my gosh, I could literally spend hours in here. Look at this little model setup of the famous Tyrannosaurus Rex flare scene with the Jeeps flipped over. Hey! You've got all kinds of storyboards, little figures. Jurassic Park was revolutionary for a lot of reasons. They revolutionized how CGI would work. They actually built animatronics, real practical uh, pieces of giant dinosaurs as well. So that's why the T-Rex looks so realistic because he was real. Wow, 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 wow. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. On this little TV right here, they're actually showing you the stop motion sequence that these clay figures were used in so that they could map out the scene before actually shooting it with the actors and with the dinosaur. Whoa. Just imagine, it goes from these storyboards to stop motion claymation essentially to the real thing. What I'm loving too are all the Easter eggs and nods to folks that really worked on these movies. There's a sticky note right here that says, hey Steven, can we fix this leak? I assume that's a note to Steven Spielberg, of course the director. Over here, you've got uh, different notes. You've got a note to John, who I believe would be a nod to John Schlag, who was one of the graphics designers who did the computer graphics for the dinosaurs. Phil, that'd be Phil Tippett. He was on the special effects teams. And fun fact, he's actually credited as Dinosaur Wrangler in the credits of the movie. And then over here, you've got 
talk to Stan about scale layout, Stan Winston is one of the greatest special effects uh, people in the business of Hollywood, and he was in charge of creating all the real dinosaurs, most notably the T-Rex. So I love that they are paying homage to all these people that made this movie come to life, because I think we can all agree, between the use of amazing state-of-the-art CGI, uh, the practical effects, it's, it's 30 years later, this movie's still incredible. Of course, this really is a merchandise shop, so there is gonna be a lot of cool Jurassic merchandise. I'm gonna highlight a few of my favorite things as we go around the store. I'm loving this Ian Malcolm collection, including this Objects in the Mirror are Closer Than They Appear sweatshirt. And then you've also got, I'm always on the lookout for a future ex Mrs. Malcolm, hilarious. That's also on a mug, should you choose to drink your shirtless Jeff Goldblum. As far as some of the 30th merch goes, you've got a charcoal t-shirt a green t-shirt, a tumbler, a to-go cup, an Isla Nublar 1993 shirt. I kind of like that one. The iconic Jeep license plate, a welcome kit. Hold on. Oh, cool. It's like a bunch of goodies that would be in the movie, like the safety goggles, instructions, a visitor badge, etc. A purse. I don't think that's 30th exclusive, but it's cool. Mystery pin set. Pin, 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 pin. Keychain, lanyard lanyard pouch. Denim jacket I'm trying to convince myself I don't need because it's $110. Yellow t-shirt. Sign. Mug. Spear jersey. Shot glass. Different t-shirt. Magnet. Coke freestyle cup. And cup holder. Just all the pictures in here of all the detail of things like the iconic Jurassic Park Jeeps. You can see real pictures of them on set. You can see storyboards and drawings of them and all the little notes of the detail they want on it. Ugh. I could literally stay in here for hours. Drawings of actual dinosaurs. Here's some concept art. I really am drawn to this picture kind of on the bottom second to the right because it's a raft ride because in the book, it's not a Jeep tour, it's a raft ride. Um, but they decided to change that in the movie obviously and make it a Jeep tour because water is so hard to work with as Steven Spielberg learned making Jaws. So he learned his lesson there and they went for a land dinosaur tour. Also note the fun little Easter egg on the raft picture though, it says looks like a fun ride exclamation point because of course over in Islands of Adventure, Jurassic Park River Adventure is a fun ride. Ooh, also look at the costuming stuff up here. You've got drawings of the kids. You've got drawings of John Hammond. You've got uh, Dr. Alan Grant's hat. You've got some costume pieces right here for what looked like the Jurassic Park employees. I particularly like the sticky note about Dr. Alan Grant that says less cowboy <laughs> and needs a paisley bandana, red. Oh my gosh, here's a video of them making the giant T-Rex. Unfortunately, the original T-Rex um, was destroyed. It was like rotting and falling apart, but, but I've actually seen some of the other dinosaurs using the Jurassic Park sequels and things. Uh, I went to this very cool exhibit in LA. You can check it out in our 12 hours in LA video, but I saw the real dinosaurs and just the scale of these things is massive. At the CGI desk now, you can see a couple more fun Easter eggs. Here's the script for the movie. There's also a nod here to Gerg the Llama, um, who originally was Greg, but he shows up in a lot of the tribute stores. My assumption is that it's a nod to Gregory Hall, who is a Universal Creative um, team member, and he makes a lot of these things. He was very instrumental in Velocicoaster. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna nerd out about all this. Another fun Easter egg, there's a sign here for Acorn Soda, Earl's Acorn Soda. If you are a Universal fan, you probably know about Earl the Squirrel. He's the holiday mascot named after a real squirrel that would cause electrical issues when he would chew on wires in the big Universal Christmas tree. And now he has taken on a life of his own and he's like a huge thing in the Universal fan community. Moving into our next room, but there's a couple things on this display case. This is obviously a nod to Tim, the younger brother. Although in the book, interesting, he's the older. It's, it's an older boy, younger girl. They flipped it for the movie, but obviously you've got the night vision goggles that he puts on. And then you've got the danger 10,000 bolt sign, which of course he does get a blast of. And he should absolutely be dead, but um, he's not for some reason. Anyway, this next scene looks like it's the kitchen, which is very exciting. And we even have a clever girl. She is so spooky. And they have some of the sound effects going for the movie the raptor noises, they've got the kitchen clanging, you can see things are knocked over, you've even got the door here. I think that's probably one of the most iconic scenes of the movie is when she breathes into that door and then she uses her claw to open it. 
Well, fun Jurassic Park fact, they actually used a bunch of different real life animals to make the noises for the different dinosaurs. And that blowing effect was a horse exhaling, but also for the raptors. Um, how do I say this on a family friendly channel? They used tortoises that were making more tortoises as some of their raptor noises. Also a goose. So not animals you'd think would make raptor noises, but you know what? Whatever works, it, it certainly did. A couple other fun dinosaur sounds to know. The T-Rex, some of his noises were made by Gary Rystrom, the sound director's Jack Russell Terrier named Buster. So huge size difference there. Also a baby elephant. And then probably one of the most famous moments in the film besides the raptors is the Brachiosaurus when it sneezes on Dr. Alan Grant and Lex and Tim when they're hiding in the tree. That sneeze noise was made by a whale blowhole. Y'all, the Easter eggs and props are off the charts in here. I'm gonna guess a lot of the stuff behind glass was really used in the movie just because this is a universal owned movie and they are known to put their movie props out in the parks. Like you've got some of the walkie talkies, you've got some of the dishware and some of the items that would have been in the Discovery Center. You've got the manual override switch. You've got the nightlight or the flashlight that Dr. Ellie Sadler has to use. You've got the hat worn by John Hammond. Nice hat. You've got the Barbasol can that, uh. Newman uses to steal the dinosaur embryos, and it's even the fake one where you can see the little dinosaurs that would go in there. You've got some of the different lanyards, including Phil, and I'm gonna say that's Phil Tippett, who again is the special effects person, so that's a fun Easter egg. But my favorite one in this case so far are these two different books. This is a real book by a real paleontologist named John Horner. He was the inspiration for the Dr. Alan Grant character, and he was actually served as a consultant on the film as a paleontology consultant so they could get things as realistic as possible. Of course, it's still a movie, so they took some creative liberties, but they did have a paleontology consultant, and because of him, we have Dr. Alan Grant. And here's Dr. Alan Grant's book, the fictitious book that exists within the universe of Jurassic Park. When Tim meets Dr. Alan Grant, he says, I read your book. I read your book. This is the book that he's holding. If you were to look at the back of it, it'd be a picture of Dr. Alan Grant. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna take it a step further because not only do these books look very, very similar, not only is Dr. Alan Grant based on John Horner, but if you look closely, the foreword of John Horner's book is by legendary British uh, documentary narrator David Attenborough. Dr. Alan Grant is by Sir Richard Attenborough, who is not only David Attenborough's brother, but played John Hammond in the movies. This is awesome too. Here's all the storyboard and photo scenes for the sets that they have in here to take photos with. So for example, here's the kitchen scene. You can see that raptors coming around the corner there. Looks towards the nose, Tim sits motionless. You've got your notes on there. You've got your master diagrams. And oh, this is fun, they're color coded. So it looks like Lex is red, Tim is purple, the raptor is green and raptor B is yellow. And they have this whole scene mapped out, the iconic kitchen scene with the pathways of all the different characters. Look at these pictures of the kitchen sets. You've got the different boxes and such, and then you can actually see them over here in this recreated set, which is awesome. Another scene they've got storyboarded right here is the maintenance shed scene when Dr. Ellie Sadler has to go and save the day and it says don't forget arm because Samuel L. Jackson arm like comes out at her. You've got the in the restroom scene, Polaroids of the dinosaur and the toilet. <laughs> the Jeep in the night scene where uh, Wayne Knight gets attacked by the uh, Dilophosaurus. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at that, that's the car when it hangs from the tree that uh, Tim's still in it and he and Alan Grant have to get out of the tree really quickly. I am peeking out, y'all. Couple more photo ops, including this one with the Dilophosaurus. And you can hear his little chirping noises. Here's a cool Easter egg that actually has ties to Walt Disney World. So this weather source, weather information, hurricane warning, and this uh, Kauai Teen Survivor poster are because a huge hurricane hit Hawaii when they were on set filming Jurassic Park and all of the airlines were down. So Steven Spielberg called a personal pilot that he knew, Fred Sorensen, who he actually had used on Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark as a pilot. And he was so good and charismatic that they put him into Indiana Jones as Jock Lindsay, the pilot at the beginning of the film. Uh, so that's why Jock Lindsay's hangar bar at Disney Springs is called that, and it's an Indiana Jones themed bar. But to take it one step further, there's actually a T-Rex tooth in a case on the porch of Jock Lindsay's. And there's a little note with it that says, 
Jock, thanks for getting us off the island, SS. And it's a real T-Rex tooth that was used in the movie in Disney, which I think is hilarious and very cool. More merchandise in this transition room, as well as another Moldomatic, if you wanted the Raptor Claw Moldomatic. I'm kind of hoping there's a T-Rex one. And then there's another photo op, this time with that scene I was talking about with Ellie Sadler and the Raptor. Mr. Hammond, I think we're back in business. And there's another Earl the Squirrel nod around the corner from the Raptor. If you look on the voltage box, it says danger electric. It says danger electrical hazard, and it has a drawing of Earl getting electrocuted, which is very dark humor. But I find it to be funny. I, I love it. I just love that Universal does stuff like that. They're not afraid to kind of poke fun and jump in with the lore and be quick and timely with things like Earl the Squirrel. So we love that. And now it looks like we are headed into our final room more collectibles and merchandise, but most importantly, the treat case. What do they got in there, King Kong? This case is really fun. Nothing's for sale, but it's merchandise throughout the last 30 years because obviously Jurassic Park is a phenomenon. We're celebrating it three decades later. It was a huge success. It revolutionized how we do movies. It was groundbreaking. Like I said earlier, it still holds up. Jurassic Park actually cost $63 million to make but to date it has grossed over $1.1 billion worldwide. And the entire franchise has grossed over $6 billion worldwide. Quick, guess in your head, what's the lowest and highest grossing films in the franchise? Do, 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 do. Okay, time's up. Lowest, Jurassic Park 3. They just set a trap. They actually set a trap. Grossing up pennies. Pennies, basically, $358 million. Embarrassing, honestly. And the highest is Jurassic World, which grossed over $1.67 billion worldwide. It's one of the top grossing franchises of all time as well, and people love it. So it's really fun to look at this old merchandise, like, oh my gosh, look at this little old wooden cutout of a sexy Dr. Ian Malcolm. You've got ties, collectible cups. Oh my gosh, McDonald's fry collector. I remember that newspapers and articles about the movie when it came out. I mean, oh my God, Spitter Watch. That is hilarious. I wish you could buy that. That is hysterical. The VHS had that at my house. Play sets, old shirts and lunch boxes. Dinosaur bath soap, jello molds, hilarious. A friendly team member also just pointed out this great secret to me. If you look at that tan tag behind this magazine, it's got the numbers 090123. And that's because Halloween Horror Nights kicks off this year on September 1st, 2023. I'm very into this collection. It's very bright and retro. Um, really important question. Do I need a Jurassic Park cardigan? There's a T-Rex on the back and everything. Oh my gosh. I'm also obsessed with these ducks. I have all three of the main Jaws characters, but do I need a Dr. Alan Grant duck? Let's take a look at the treats. We've got Dino Chow, which is cinnamon glazed pecans, Mr. DNA cookie, a 30th anniversary cupcake, a whoopie pie, a logo cookie, a jar cake, a s'more, sexy Dr. Ian Malcolm Brownie, a trifle cake. Look how cute that is with the gummy dinosaurs on top. Cookie dough balls that look like different dinosaur eggs. Lava fudge, more fudge, brownies. What to get, what to get. Who am I kidding? There's only one choice. Got my sexy Dr. Ian Malcolm Brownie, and I'm gonna eat it out here near Trixie. This is a real on-set used Triceratops for the sick Triceratops scene. It actually currently lives at the Give Kids the World Village, which is the location nearby that Make-A-Wish kids and their families can stay at when they come to the theme parks. Um, but they brought it here for the tribute store, and it's really cool. And it has an Easter egg right here. There's a little sign that says, caution, West Indian lilac, do not ingest. And there is some of the lilac. If you're familiar with the movie, you'll know that that's what she eats and gets sick. And Dr. Ellie Sattler, our hero paleobotanist, has to save the day. That is one big pile of shit. Here it is, in all of its glory. This is so funny to me. This is truly giving the people what they want. Life uh, finds a way. Got that little, it looks like it's gonna be maybe peanut butter or caramel icing on the top, a chocolate covered brownie. And there he is, Dr. Ian Malcolm. Here we go. Sexy Dr. Ian Malcolm. Do I eat his head? That feels weird. I'm gonna eat his foot. Mm. 
Okay, so obviously by looking at it, you can tell it is an incredibly dense and rich chocolate brownie. It's really, really thick to seize on that. It's a very good brownie though. Some brownies are sometimes too rich for me and it certainly is rich, but it's not overwhelming, I would say. Um, the frosting, not peanut butter, caramel. And the chocolate adds like a nice crunch on it. There's like a chocolate layer to the top. It's adding some good texture difference. Honestly, it's pretty simple flavor-wise. It's a classic chocolate brownie. Caramel, not something I would personally pick out of the case, except for the fact that it had Dr. Ian Malcolm on top of it, which I think makes it a real delight. So definitely shareable, and I like that they give you to-go cases so you can pop them in your bag and eat them later or bring them home. Um, but I always like the bakery case treats. But now it's time to get Jurassic across the... Now it's time to get Jurassic to the other park. I can't, I can't keep making this joke. It's not working. Um, now it's time to scoot over to Islands of Adventure, where, of course, the Jurassic Park themed land is, and they've got some specialty food and goodies over there. So off we go. Made it to Islands of Adventure and Jurassic Park. Headed in first to see if maybe we can meet a dinosaur. Then I'm going to scope out some of the specialty snacks. Maybe take a spin on Velocicoaster. Ugh, I just love walking through this section of the park and hearing the epic John Williams Jurassic Park score. One of the best movie scores of all time, in my opinion, anyway. On our way to the Meet the Velociraptor experience, just want to point out this Jeep right here, screen use. Also, you've got a Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3. But if you take a closer look inside the Jeep, you can see who is driving based on that yellow rain jacket and that ID badge. Fun little Easter egg to look for the next time you're watching Jurassic Park is you can actually see a scene from another of Steven Spielberg's most famous movies, my favorite movie of all time, Jaws, which Ted Lasso in the season finale just called a perfect film, which makes it the law. Ted Lasso says it, it must be true. Anyway, on Nedry's screen at one point in Jurassic Park, you can see that he's actually watching Jaws, which is fun because of course, Steven Spielberg directed both. Headed to the raptor encounter, this is where you can meet either a bebe or a full-grown raptor, including Blue from Jurassic World, one of my low-key favorite experiences in Universal. I think it's so underrated and so fun. Can't wait. Now, there is no way to know if you're going to be meeting a baby raptor or a full-grown raptor, other than asking the friendly raptor wranglers outside. Both are very fun. Of course, the baby raptors are cute, but the big raptors are where it's at. And it's one of my favorite things because I feel like everybody watches the group in front of them meet the raptor, and they're like, you dumb idiots, that's not a real dinosaur. But then you get up there, and I guarantee you'll think it's a real raptor. Up here for me. There we go. You look like you work here, which, um, please be careful. She does not like us. So I want you to think of a thing that you really want to tell Blue, something that's important. Okay. And then I want you to turn around and try to tell Blue this okay. thing. You're a good girl. See, how does that go? Oh, how dare you! <laughs> <laughs> love, love, love meeting the raptors. And of course, shout out to the raptor handlers who not only joked around with my outfit, but they're always really funny, really talented. Enjoy that so much. Now let's head to get one of the exclusive new treats for the 30th. Stopping by the watering hole. This is a drink stand near the entrance of Jurassic Park on the Hogwarts side. Here you can get a variety of frozen beverages as well as beers and other cocktails. You can get my favorite of the signature beers here at Universal, which is the Jurassic World Isla Nublar IPA, that fruity IPA I love so much. You can only get it in the Jurassic Park area. You can get Coke Freestyle refills here, but they've got some brand new cocktails for Jurassic Park and a brand new souvenir cup. So that's why we're here. Real dinosaurs are here, the birds. How fun is this new souvenir cup? They actually had this out at Universal Hollywood before, but they've brought it here to Orlando. And there are four of the mixed drinks that you can put in this cup. I went for the Nublar Libre, which was recommended to me by the bartender when I let him know I'm not a big fan of sweet drinks as most of the beverages here are. The Nublar Libre is Chairman's Reserved Spice Rum, Lime and Grapefruit Juice, Vanilla Bean, Passion Fruit Puree, Cinnamon Syrup, and it's topped with Columbiana Soda. He went light on the juice for me, which I very much appreciate. The other beverages you could put into this cup, the other new drinks here are the Cape Guayaba, which is a vodka guava drink, the Zombie, which has absinthe and rum and a bunch of juices in it, and the Cucumber Basil Colada, which is absinthe, cucumber, basil, kiwi, and coconut cream. But he told me this was the most popular one and that I would enjoy this one the most, so hopefully he's right. And a fun thing to know about this souvenir cup is that if you bring it back here, you can refill it with any of those four drinks I just listed for $2 off or any of the classic mixed drinks, not frozen drinks for four dollars off here we go moment of truth oh 
That's not too bad. I like the soda. The soda actually kind of reminds me of Beverly. So it's bitter and most people might hate that, but I actually don't hate Beverly when used as a mixer as it's supposed to be. Definitely not sweet, can taste the rum, can taste that bitterness. I like it. They also have an exclusive Fanta in the freestyle machines right now that was made just for the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park, but we're gonna get that in a minute. Now, would I pick this drink over the IPA? No, the IPA is my favorite drink, probably in all of Universal, um, but I wanted the cute cup and it's always fun to try something new, so the bartender did a good job. Now, let us take our beverage and go to the Discovery Center. Headed into the Discovery Center, which is modeled after the Discovery Center in the movie. And you can certainly tell that when you walk in here and see the T-Rex skeleton and just the entire design of the building. Fun fact, screen used dinosaur right there. But before we go downstairs, I want to point out an Easter egg. I know I've mentioned this one before, but it's just so cool. Dr. Alan Grant's book is hiding in here as well. I know I mentioned it in the tribute store, but there it is, Dinosaur Detectives. Loving the new decorations in here. Now up top here, you've also got Burger Diggs, which is a burger spot, as the name might suggest. I actually really like Burger Diggs, one of my favorite places to eat in this park if I'm not eating in Wizarding World. Not just because you can sit on the balcony and overlook Velocicoaster, but because I really like their burgers. I think they're better than Disney Quick Service burgers, and you can add sauteed mushrooms and onions, and they're pretty fun. They also have a themed bun. Um, before it used to have the Jurassic Park logo, now it has like raptor claws on it, which is cool. But we're gonna get a brand new item at the other quick service restaurant in this location in a moment. For now, we're gonna bop around and see what we can find out here in the Discovery Center. Looks like there's some eggs. I love looking for Easter eggs in here. Like, take a look back on the shelves, you'll see a couple Barbasol cans. Right here, you've got a knit Dr. Ian Malcolm. You've got Mr. DNA. Happy Pride! Oh my God, they colored one of the dinosaurs to be rainbow. I love that. This area is really fun for little ones, especially if you've got people that are too short to ride Velocicoaster or Jurassic Park River Adventure. They can come in here and do different dinosaur activities. Like we can scan to see what kind of egg this is. Insert egg, slide carrier into scanner. Check, oh, stay. I'm gonna use my knee. All right, scan. It's scanning. Select knobs. Egg has been inserted. Select a scan mode. Oh. oh my gosh, look at that. I want to do x-ray. Let's see what's in there. <gasps> look, there it is. Do you think it's a raptor? Let's check out the DNA sequencing now where you can splice your DNA with a dinosaur to see what kind of dinosaur you'd be. It's definitely not terrifying. All right, let's make a dinosaur. A mollysaur. Stand by. Okay, thank you. Welcome to Mr. DNA. Hi, Mr. DNA. I'm a big fan of your work. I'm definitely a carnivore. Um, strong. I'm large. I'm a, I'm a solo dinosaur. It wants to scan my brain, so I have to put my face in here. That's what my brain looks like, apparently. And last, it needs my DNA. All right, Mollysaurus is coming. It's going. It's making a Mollysaurus. I bet she's beautiful. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's a nightmare. Unstable is right. Next up, I'm taking my souvenir beverage with me into the standby line here at Velocicoaster, one of the newest attractions at Universal, one of my favorites of all time. And while this attraction does have Express Pass, and I could be using it because my annual pass gives me Express after four, I'm headed into the standby line because there's a bunch of really awesome Jurassic Park Easter eggs in the standby line, so we're gonna go check those out. Velocicoaster has a 51, five, one inch height requirement. It is so much fun. Top speed to 70 miles an hour. Hanging inversion, top hat, two launches. It is so, so much fun. If you're a coaster fan, you gotta check this one out. Uh, but let's go see what we can find in the queue. 
So the plot of Velocicoaster is that we are in Jurassic World, the theme park created for the Jurassic World films, but we are before the events of the first Jurassic World. We are before the Indominus Rex. In fact, when you're in the queue, you can see a poster for the Indominus Rex as a coming soon attraction. And as you may recall from that movie, Claire Deering says that InGen has requested more teeth. So this is one of the more teeth experiences that Jurassic World has made, a roller coaster through the raptor paddock. So you are gonna see real raptor in the queue, you are gonna see Owen Grady and Claire Deering. It is so, so much fun. I cannot hype this roller coaster up enough. And uh, post it 60 minute wait. We'll see if that's true. First up, you'll see Mr. DNA giving you instructions on the lockers, which are very important. And then as you enter the enclosed area, you will see the four raptors from Jurassic World, Blue, Echo, Delta, and Charlie. Where's the alpha? You're looking at him, kid. That's Chris Pratt, for those who didn't know. Also, when you go past this section, when you see the red lights, that means the raptors are gonna run by which is very exciting. On this tray, you're gonna see a glass of water. That's actually a nod to two different things. The first, sorry, the raptors are coming. Hello. Oh. The first are the ripples you see when the dinosaur is walking by in the water. And the second is the glass of water that Dr. Ian Malcolm uses to explain chaos theory to Dr. Ali Sadler. Change. Change. Why? Because tiny variations, uh, the, the orientation of the hairs on your hands. Yeah, well, look at this. Next Every up, and you skip this whole part if you go through Express, but you're going to see Dr. Dr. Henry Wu, aka P.D. Wong, who appears in the majority of, of the Jurassic film. Is he the real well villain of these stories? Who's to say? It's interesting because when you think about the first Jurassic Park, there's not a clear cut villain. It's really kind of just like humans versus nature. But as they go on, you get more of that kind of stereotypical Developing villain. But foundations of is it really Henry Wu? All vertebrate embryos are inherently female anyway. They just require an extra hormone given at the right developmental stage to make them male. We simply deny them that. Next up, take a look at these lockers because you're going to see some books by some notable names. You've got Dr. Ian Malcolm's book, How the World Will End. And then on this shelf, you've got the book we've been talking about, Dinosaur Detectives, but there's the back shot with Dr. Alan Grant. And not to be left out right here, you've got Planting the Past by Dr. Ellie Sadler. And then, of course, the best part of the queue, which you get to see if you go in standby or express, but not single rider. The Raptors. I truly think this is the best queue ever. They are so cool. They are some of Universal's best animatronics. They're so realistic. Look at them. Is it weird I want to pet her? And now here's the lockers where you have to put up everything. Can't take fanny packs or anything on board. Make sure you remember either your color, your number, or your dinosaur, because you're actually going to come in on the other side of these lockers. You're not going to come to the same room. It's going to help operationally. They're two-sided. So yellow pterodactyl one is what I need to remember. simply the best it is so much fun it's so smooth it's so thrilling the back is my favorite because you get really whipped around but the front gives you the best view five stars and Absolutely. now headed to get some exclusive jurassic park 30th eats another little fun detail along the way though Outside on the lower level of the Discovery Center where you load for Velocicoaster is this giant mural and it's modeled after the one that you see in the Discovery Center in the movie you know the one with the jello Headed now to get something to eat at Thunder Falls Terrace. Now again, normally I'm more of a Burger Diggs kind of girly, but Thunder Falls has some specialty items for the 30th, so I gotta try those, obviously. And no, despite loving Jurassic Park, I will not be doing the river adventure today. You know, not, not feeling getting wet right now. On the way in though, gotta pause and grab a selfie with another screen used vehicle. And of course, our friend the T-Rex. I love all the photo ops around here. Thunder Falls Terrace has barbecue, so they've got ribs and roasted pork and turkey legs. I love the detail in here. I will say all of the ironwork on the outside, the different dinosaurs. I love the Triceratops skeletons. 
And yes, you can watch other people get wet from here, which I prefer over getting wet myself. That's kind of a lie, because I really do like Jurassic Park River Adventure, but not today. Team member took me to a seat at Thunder Falls. I did mobile order before I got here, and then I clicked I'm here when I arrived, and then I matched my phone up to my table number. My food has arrived, and it looks and smells delish. These are the prehistoric raptor wings. I went for the platter. So you've got some char-grilled chicken wings here. They have been marinated in olive and spices and tossed in a sweet chili sauce. And then the platter comes with a side of cilantro, lime rice, and black beans. You can also upgrade to the combo, which gets you a milkshake as well. But I went for the Jurassic Park 30th Coca-Cola Freestyle Cup because at the Freestyle Machines, there's a special Jurassic Park drink. They don't have a freestyle machine here, so I just got it filled with unsweet tea, and then I can refill it outside, and we'll talk more about the freestyle cups at Universal in general, but pretty cool cup, I gotta say. What I'm really enjoying about these wings is they really do look like raptor wings, like the way that they took them off the chicken. Because <laughs> normally, you know, you've got your flats and your drums, but they, like, took the whole leg, which sounds gross, but it looks like a raptor. I guess raptors are just birds. Mm. It's a pretty good dinosaur. These are pretty good chicken wings. First of all, they're cooked really well. The skin is nice and crispy. The chicken is really moist. A lot of times when you're bulk cooking chicken, especially, it can get really dry and they're not. It does have a slight sweetness to it. I was worried that because it's um, olive marinated that it would have that briny, salty flavor and it doesn't really. A little bit of sweetness from the chili sauce and a tiny bit of spice. If I'm being honest, I want more heat. I did get a hot sauce and a sweet tea member was kind enough to bring me ranch, so I'm gonna kind of like concoct a dipping sauce. But overall, I think they're pretty good. And um, they're not gonna be the best wings you've ever had, but they're a fun offering. And I think wings should be on more menus, especially in theme parks. They have them in a lot of places like in City Walk and, and resorts or, or downtown Disney, but in lounges, you don't see a lot of wings in the parks, but I love wings and there should be more wings. Let's try the rice and beans now. Here's the rice. Pretty standard, not super cilantro-y. If you're against cilantro, I mean, it might still taste like so, but it's not overwhelmingly cilantro-y like Chipotle's and the beans. Ooh, I actually really like these black beans. They're kind of done the like almost refried style where they're, I don't want to call it goopy because that sounds like I'm disparaging it, but I like it, if you know what I mean. Well flavored, I think this is a good meal. I don't come into this restaurant a lot because I don't love theme park barbecue, which is what they primarily serve, but I think this is a great offering. Also, how cool is my cup? Gonna drink this sweet tea while I finish my wings and then we'll go get the special Fanta that you can only get here. Wings consumed and headed here to Bone Chillin' Beverages. This is one of the many stands throughout Universal that has a freestyle machine. The refillable cups are very popular at Universal, especially because this isn't something Disney does outside the hotels. Um, but this one was $17.99 before any kind of discount. The more cups you buy, the less each cup is. And then you can refill it as many times as you want throughout the day at the various freestyle stands, um, restaurants, etc. You can put ices in it as well as soda. And then as a fun tip, if you're going to come back another day or you're an annual pass holder, you can reactivate it for $10 and then keep using it throughout the rest of your trip. So if you're gonna have a couple sodas or a couple beverages, it's not a bad buy. Um, and I'm excited to get the exclusive Jurassic Park flavor. Let's see, I believe it's right here. The Fanta Roaring Refresher. Ooh, zero sugar or regular. You know, we're going all in. I have no idea what flavor it is. And that's the fun part. Is it orange? Is it melon? Who's to say? Orange? Orange and berry, I think? I think it's orange and berry or orange and cherry. It's not bad. I will say, when I normally have a freestyle, I like to get Diet Coke with vanilla. I don't know why, it's just a little treat. I get it. That's not too bad. And uh, it's fun that there's a special Fanta you can only get here for Jurassic Park. But now we're gonna do something really fun because we're getting special access to a special Jurassic location. Any guesses? Let's go. Welcome friends to Lowe's Royal Pacific Hotel here at Universal Orlando. And I know you might be thinking, Molly, this is a Jurassic Park video. You've already done a hotel review at Lowe's Royal Pacific Hotel. Why are you there? 
Well, I'll tell you friends, one of the coolest hotel rooms that I've never seen in real life, we get to check it out right now. That's right here at Royal Pacific, which is a premier hotel, one of the top tier hotels at Universal. They have Jurassic World themed suites. And I have always wanted to stay in one. But unfortunately, they were booked up during the time of this filming. However, I reached out to Universal. I said, hey, long shot, but I'm making a Jurassic Park 30th video. Is there any chance you can let me see a suite and share it with the Bam Fam in between check-in and check-out from some other guests? And they said, you bet Jurassic you can. They said yes. That's, that's the moral of the story. I need to stop trying to make that joke. Anyway, welcome to Royal Pacific. Again, Alan and I did a staycation here recently. This is an awesome resort. It's got tons of great food. You get the perk of being an express pass here. Lots and lots of fun. But for now, let's find the dinosaurs. All right, made it up to the floor. I even have a Jurassic World key. Super, super excited. Here we go into the ultimate themed. Wait a minute. I know what you're thinking. Molly? This looks exactly like the Royal Pacific room you stayed in when you did a review. That's almost true. This is, this is a slightly nicer room. It's got that theme park view. It's a bigger room, but that's a little interesting. Look at this. Is this not the coolest room you've ever seen? Technically the Jurassic Park room is a kid's suite, but obviously, whatever we book this room, I will be sleeping in here. The beds are the geospheres in Jurassic World. You know, when the kids go on them and Jimmy Fallon's the host and then they get trapped in the geosphere and the Indominus Rex tries to kill them and it picks it up and it smashes it on the ground. You guys know the moment. I love the, oh my God, the pillows. I'm gonna geek out over everything. The pillows, the Mosasaurus. Is this one Mosasaurus too? Yeah. And then they've got Stegosauruses, oh, Indominus Rex footprints. Even the curtains are dinosaur themed. And you get a beautiful view of the pool and Hogwarts and Velocicoaster, which is fun. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Over here, you've got a little desk that's got the caution tape and it looks like the lockers in Jurassic World. You've got a map of Isla Nublar. And of course, across this entire back panel right here, you have this mural of dinosaurs. This is awesome. So these are the family suites, obviously themed to Jurassic World. The price varies just like all of the hotel pricing does at Universal based on the season. And as you can imagine, these are in very high demand. It's hard to find any night that these are available. Um, while doing a quick search, I was able to find just a random weeknight in the summer and the room was around $700. I have before when looking seen it a couple hundred dollars less with an annual pass discount. Um, but then of course it can also get much more expensive when it is the holiday season and the peak season. But you can sleep up to five guests in here. Obviously you've got a king bed right here. This can, couch can convert into a single pull down and then you've got the two Jurassic World suites. So definitely a splurge room, but so, so fun, especially if you've got kids that are really into dinosaurs or Jurassic Park. And don't forget, when you stay at Royal Pacific, you do get Express Pass included. So if you put a bunch of people in here, it can kind of even out, especially when Express Pass is more expensive, over $100 or $150 per person per day. So, but this room's really, really cool, and I'm grateful that we got the chance to see it. And one of these days, we'll definitely do a staycation in here, and I'm not gonna leave my gyrosphere bed. Well, friends, that is a wrap on my Jurassic Park 30th anniversary video. I hope you had fun following along. Jurassic Park is one of my favorite movies, favorite franchises of all time. And I think it's so fun when the parks celebrate things like this. I absolutely adored the tribute store. How fun is that room? Loved the specialty treats. And you can never go wrong with a ride on Velocicoaster or meeting a real life raptor. Let me know which Jurassic Park character is your favorite down in the comments. I think mine's pretty obvious. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, come hang out with us and chat in Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been Dynamite. Bye.